once you've installed SQL 2008 on your virtual machine, you'll be able to use the AdventureWorks database. So I've opened up my AdventureWorks database. So this is just to get acclimated with some of the features of SQL and Management Studio. And just to kind of show you where you'll be going throughout the uh, course to do some of the assignments. So if I uh, drill down into databases and then AdventureWorks, under AdventureWorks, you've got some, uh, some items in here. So we're gonna open up tables. So when you open up tables, now this is gonna look a little different than the databases that, that we'll be creating from scratch. But when I look at this list of tables, and I'll just expand this a little bit. And by the way, in Management Studio, on this left side, this is called the Object Explorer on the left-hand side. And it shows us all of the objects in our database. And we can drill down using the little plus symbols. So you can see here, as I go through this list, I can open different tables up. So each one of these is a table. And one thing to note here is that the table names have two parts. The first part is the schema name. The second part is the actual table name. Now in this particular database, since this is a sample, they use lots of different schemas in here. So you've got the sales schema, the purchasing schema, production, person, human resources, and then DBO. In your databases that you create from scratch, all of your tables are gonna have a schema of DBO. And we usually don't change those in this course, uh, although in a, in a real database in the real world, you may use different schemas. And we'll talk more about why and how we would use schemas later on. But for right now, it suffice it to say that these are all database tables that we're looking at here. Now in your system, you're gonna to wanna to find humanresources.employee, hit the plus, and then we're gonna open up columns. So here we can take a look at some of the columns that we have in this table. So an employee, if you think, what types of things might describe an employee? Uh, so for example, here we have a uh, contact ID, a national ID number, login ID, manager ID, a title, birth date, marital status, gender, hire date, salaried flag, vacation hours, and so forth and so on. So these are all things, these are all columns or fields, and these are all nouns that can describe our employee. So the employee is the, uh, is the table, and the employee table is gonna have many different records, and each one of those records has columns or fields which describe each one of those records, which we can see here. At a very minimum, you'll also see in your uh, list of fields, you'll see a data type. So for example, the login ID has a data type of nvarchar256, which means that it's a variable character field that can have up to 256 characters. Whereas the contact ID, for example, is an integer. INT stands for integer. We're gonna learn more about data types later on. You'll also notice that some of these columns have a little key next to them, indicating that they are keys or they uniquely identify a record. In this particular table, we can open up the keys uh, field to take a look. So you can see here that there is one primary key, which is the employee ID. That's the primary key for this table. So every employee has an employee ID that uniquely identifies that employee. In this case, that's actually called a surrogate key. We'll learn more about natural and surrogate keys later on. But just understand for now that a key uniquely identifies a row or a record in our database table. Uh, so every table usually has to have a key. It's not required, but it's usually best practice to have a key in a SQL Server. Um, some database engines do require a unique key on every record. Uh, so down here at the bottom, you can see the list of keys. Now there are two types of keys. Some are prefixed with PK, meaning that they're primary keys. That means it identifies a record in this table. And FK means that it is a key from a different table. So in other words, um, human resource employee can have a relationship to contact and a relationship to a manager. And if we double click on one of these uh, foreign keys, we can look at the properties. So you can do this with any object in SQL. So when you double click on it, you'll notice some extra panes open over here on the right. And uh, here we see the properties of that foreign key. Uh, and we'll play with this more later on. This is a pretty complicated one. We're gonna start a little more simple with our Westlake database that we do for, for our project in this course and our Grandfield College database. If you wanna close this, um, and by the way, this is just showing us the schema of the table. So we can see all those fields. We can change th uh, things in here if we wanted to. We can add an additional column if we had some other field that we wanted to store about an employee. But you can hit the little X on the upper right to close that. We can also, if uh, from Management Studio, you can right click on a table and you'll see a whole bunch of options in here. Uh, one we can do is if you click on, uh, you can either click select top 1000 
or you can hit script table as, and you can, and we'll learn more about select, insert, update, and delete later on, but this will create a select, insert, update, or delete query for you. Uh, but for right now, let's just click on select top 1000. And this is gonna show us two things. So at the top, this is the select statement uh, that gets created by SQL in order to run that uh, select statement. So we can see those records in that table. And here at the bottom, we can actually see the records in that table. We're gonna learn more about how to create these statements later on in the course. So we'll cover that later on. Once you get to this point in the lab, you're gonna click on the start button and we're gonna open Notepad. So if you don't see Notepad in your list, you're gonna type Notepad. And you're gonna type your name in here. So I'm just gonna type Brian space green. I'm going to shrink this window so it's not so big and just put it up here in the corner or somewhere where it's not in the way. So I'll just put mine right here. And at this point, you'd wanna take a screen capture of the entire screen. And this will be the deliverable for lab 1-1 for unit one. And this is your first lab for the course.